Uh, UFC post fight, Darren Till versus Jorge Masvidal. Uh, also, Garcia versus uh, Spence Jr. That's my dogs, by the way. Uh, anyway, so I, yeah, I, a lot of people are saying, man, you looked great with your, your picks and everything. Um, in a sense, I feel with Darren Till versus Jorge Masvidal, I kind of got lucky uh, in that regard. Because Till didn't have any of the signs you normally associate with someone who has that, and, and I reference it, the, the post-championship blowout down. That after a young, hungry fighter faces a champion, gets blown out, they almost always lose their next fight. That was my criteria. Till didn't show any of those signs necessarily. He looked good in the first round. He wasn't gun-shy. He knocked Masvidal down. He didn't seem hesitant. He didn't seem like he was having a, a crisis of confidence during the fight. It was big, strong. But in the end, I, I think what caught him and what Masvidal, to his credit, was able to take advantage of is Darren Till has a tendency to move back under attack with his head. Uh, Jose Torres, who was a fantastic boxing world champion and helped train Mike Tyson. One of the things he said, I saw an interview with him years ago, and he said, we train Mike to go side to side. And one of the things is that it's like a train track. If you're running backwards from a train and you're on the track, it's eventually going to hit you. You can't move backward from a punch too many times because the guy will just keep punching and it'll eventually catch you. He actually said Muhammad Ali was the only fighter who was so fast the train never caught him. He could move back and back and back. So Till, Till has a tendency under attack to move his head backward. He, he keeps his head straight. And he keeps it high, but he moves it back very quickly uh, under attack. Well, Masvidal switched stances a lot during that fight and was able to almost overcommit to the left hand to get past his natural head move. So he moved back this far, and it was a really wide-reaching shot, if you noticed it. And he moved back, and it, he couldn't move back far enough. He couldn't move back enough times. So and once that clipped him, it was over. So the stance changes set that up. So he was changing stances the whole time. And then he changed stances and threw a really, really long shot and was able to overcome Till's tendency to move back. He tends to move back out of range and then back in, this kind of swinging back and forth motion. Um, Masvidal, over committing to the left hand, was able to take advantage of that. Really smart, really high fight IQ, great stuff by, stop it, really uh, great stuff by Jorge Masvidal. So a really mature fight for him. Obviously, him going back, back and forth with Leon Edwards, that's going to probably set up that fight for people who are critical of that and i hear it all the time all oh, the ufc is getting like wwe with all this backstage stuff and fighters getting into it wwe makes a lot of money and uh fighters tend to they go where the money is and so the fact that we're talking about masvidal versus leon edwards and it got a bunch of press then it worked there's no such thing as bad publicity and fighters can do whatever they can to to, to hype a fight so you might not like it, and I don't personally like it. I don't like fighters getting into fights backstage in the hotel and all that stuff. Um, it crosses a line that I don't think is, is good to cross. Um, but it, it, it works, unfortunately. So that might be the next one. Who knows? People calling for Masvidal to get a title shot. Remember, he was on a two-fight skid coming into this. Um, tough losses to really great fighters. Uh, it's, no, it's not really a knock on him. Uh, I would like to see one or two before he's in that title contention. Also, the guys at the top uh, right now, Colby Covington, Tyron Woodley still very much in the mix, Kamaru Usman, Ben Askren, great wrestlers. Not a lot of guys on that list that are going to stand and bang with, with Jorge Masvidal. If you stand and bang with Jorge Masvidal, he can put you out. He really has welterweight power. So uh, the problem is the guys at the top aren't, aren't going to really do that. Uh, he's got to get through some really tough wrestlers in order to either get the title or get a shot at the title. So that's the interesting part moving forward for Masvidal. But great win for him. Darren Till, of course, an exciting fighter. Uh, real knockout power. And he looked good for a round. Um, so I think he definitely has interesting fights in front of him. It's hardly a gigantic step back for him to get knocked out by Masvidal. So, but good for Jorge Masvidal. Errol Spence Jr. versus Mikey Garcia. I called the post-fight show for Sirius XM, uh, Sirius XM 93, the post-fight show for boxing, which was a lot of fun to do. Uh, I thought Errol Spence was going to win this fight, Errol Spence Jr. So, retroactively, this is one of those fights where you go, yeah, of course he's going to win. 
looking back on it, and the way I described it, he's bigger, he's faster, he's technical, he's a southpaw with a great jab, he's younger, has a higher knockout percentage. There wasn't anything on paper that I saw, where I saw a reason why Mikey Garcia win this fight. He didn't have, to me, any advantages size-wise, athletically, technically. Um, some people thought Mikey Garcia might be the better boxer. I disagreed. I thought Errol Spence is the better boxer. But I, I didn't expect a 12-round blowout. I really didn't. I thought, what I thought was going to happen, honestly, um, Errol Spence Jr. comes in, he's athletic and longer, and he's going to win the first three or four rounds, two or three at least. Uh, Mikey Garcia, a veteran, is going to make some adjustments, get back in the middle rounds, but then Spence is going to make some adjustments and win the... I thought Mikey Garcia, if he was going to have moments in this fight, it would be in the middle rounds uh, as he made some footwork adjustments, maybe got in the pocket, maybe it'll, made it a little ugly, and it was able... he was never able to do any of that stuff at all. This was a wipeout from the beginning. And you'll notice, and as a commentator, I did it too. Past round, it was Joe Goosen and um, Lennox Lewis were the color commentators for the show on PBC. Past round eight, it was guts and heart of Mikey Garcia. I am telling you, as a commentator myself, when we start talking about guts and heart, you're getting your ass kicked. You know, you try to be positive for both sides. I mean, even if one guy's getting his ass kicked, you, you try to say something positive about the other side. But all you can really say is, boy, he's taking his ass whooping like a man. Boy, he's fighting hard. And boy, good for him stepping up in weight class. And oh, you talk about his past accomplishments. And and past round eight, that was the narrative. The only drama past round nine was, is Errol Spence Jr. going to finish him? And, you know, to me, Errol Spence fought like a professional. You know, past round nine, it was okay. He, he, you saw him turn it on. Uh, round nine, especially round 10. Saw that Mikey Garcia was going to be tough to knock out. All right, I'll coast the last couple rounds. Kept the pressure on. He didn't give up or anything like that. But I think he stopped looking for the knockout round 11 and 12. Uh, he tested the waters. And Mikey Garcia can, is still dangerous enough. He's not just going away. He's not physically surrendering. I'll just back off. And that's what happened. So the drama in this fight was just if Errol Spence was going to turn it on enough to try and knock him out, which he didn't. What's next for Errol Spence Jr.? The two names, obviously Terrence Crawford and Keith One-Time Thurman. That's about it. Can he move up to 155? Well, there's Sean Showtime Porter. There are other guys in there. Uh, those are the only two guys that I would bet money might have a chance against Errol Spence Jr. Uh, Sean Porter, having fought against you guys the week before, looked good. Um, I don't think he has the full skill set to really take on Errol Spence Jr. Hard puncher, athletic, strong. He did a lot of in and out movements in the you guys fight, if you, if you didn't see it. But I just don't see him having that complete game. You really need to beat Errol Spence Jr. Keith Thurman is a strong, big welterweight. And I think he might have the build to kind of move forward and take the center of the ring away from Errol Spence Jr. I'm not saying he can. I'm saying that's his strategy and he has the build to do it. Kind of bully Spence a little bit, make him fight in a small ring, things like that. He has the build for that. And then Terrence Crawford probably has one of the highest boxing IQs of active fighters right now. So he's the one guy that might read something in the first three or four rounds that'll get him into the fight later. So he's the kind of guy that, that Spence will probably win the first few rounds, and then Crawford will find some gap and start exploiting it and working it and start turning the tide and then look to really unload round seven, eight, nine. So Keith Thurman and, and Terrence Crawford have totally different paths to victory, but they, they have a shot against Errol Spence Jr. But right now, I think Errol Spence Jr. is the best welterweight in the world. So I think he showed that against Mikey Garcia. Mike Garcia, what can he do? There are plenty of fights for him at, at 35, 40 um, Welter, he just looked small. He really did look small at Welter. He just looked outsized. Not that there aren't welterweights he can't beat, but I don't see the need to stay up in that weight class if he's not going to be taking on the best of the best. And I think the best of the best are going to line up to take on Errol Spence Jr. now. So um, th uh, those are my thoughts on the two main events. Um, exciting fight from Masvidal Till. Oh, a question that, that a, a caller had for me during my XM show. He said, do you think a one-sided fight like Spence versus Garcia that casual fans were paid money for? Because this is a lot of, you know, casual boxing fans. Like, oh, man, it's a big fight. Let's check it out and pay money. And it turned into a wipeout. Is that bad for boxing? Generally, yes. 
Um, if you have a crossover fight where people who don't normally watch boxing are watching it and it's not a great fight, yeah, it's going to turn some some fans off. Because a hardcore boxing fan can at least see the brilliance in Errol Spence Jr.'s performance. A casual fan will go, this one dude got beat up. They don't know how good Mikey Garcia is. Really, they may have heard of him, but they, they don't appreciate how good he is and how bad Errol Spence made him look. Um, so, yeah, is it? it's certainly not good for boxing. Is it a death blow? No. Um, but, yeah, that, that crossover appeal, you have to have an exciting fight. And it, it was just one-sided from the beginning, which I did not expect. But that's Errol Spence Jr. versus Mikey Garcia and also Till versus Masvidal. Let me know what you think. If you enjoy, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe, and I'll be breaking down more soon. Later.